Welcome to Martin Luther Chapel's online worship. Our music and readings today will be discussing talk, trust in God, praying to him, and doing all things through him. The sermon will be discussing give to Caesar and giving to God. Let us begin our worship. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of, of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the Old Testament reading from Isaiah, chapter 45, verses 1 through 7. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. This is the word of the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you 
because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God and Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's sermon uses the gospel text. Jesus' neighbors, the Pharisees and Herodians, have come to pay him a visit and want to ask him something. This brings to mind my own neighbors and some of the neighbors portrayed in movies and television shows and whatnot. Sometimes they have great qualities like Wilson from the show Home Improvement, also known as Tool Time. And if you don't know the show or know who Wilson is, he is the sage neighbor whose face is always hidden. Whenever Tim, the main character, has a moral dilemma or some sort of life struggle, Tim goes into his backyard, and without a doubt, Wilson would be there just on the other side of the fence in his own yard, read, ready and willing to offer his wise advice. Does this sound like your typical experience with your neighbors? Now, I have also heard the opposite side, where the neighbor doesn't offer any advice, but seems to always ask to borrow something. And I don't mean the ones who come after running out of sugar or flour, or maybe even some eggs every now and then, because that is more innocent and stems from more of a lack of planning than anything malicious. I'm referring to the neighbor who borrows everything from you. They come to borrow an ax, a shovel, a snowblower, a lawnmower, whatever it is that they borrow, it seems to not come home. Now, I've heard stories of some, something being borrowed for years, and these neighbors neglect others and cause more harm than good. And that is what the Pharisees and Herodians are like in our reading today. They're like bad neighbors. As long as they have control of things and are sitting at the top, then they are happy. But that doesn't mean that the people beneath them are happy or doing any better. So it appears that the status quo is being challenged by Jesus because of his teaching about the kingdom of heaven. In order to try to maintain their power and their position, the neighbors, if you will, that is the Pharisees and Herodians, concoct a plot to trap Jesus. They come with something that seems simple enough and merely want to ask a question. Now that may seem innocent, but it's a trick question that not even the Pharisees would be able to stand up against. They must certainly know that they would fall short in their own test. That is why our text says, but Jesus, aware of their malice, said, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax and they brought him a denarius. This case is regarding what to give to Caesar. Now, a little information may be needed to more clearly see why this little portion is such a problem and why the Pharisees are such hypocrites. See, they know that it is lawful to pay taxes, even though the people do not like the Romans or the emperor, they are still subject to them and so necessarily are required to pay taxes. The Pharisees would know this, and even they were against the Roman Empire or subjugated to it. They would still pay their taxes and avoid any disciplinary actions or anything that would put them in a bad standing with the empire. So that is the first part and by seeking to shame another for doing what is right, or even if it were wrong, seeking to shame someone else for the same thing that they are doing is wrong. The setup of Jesus is bad enough, and more so, doing this when they are both supposed to be following the Ten Commandments, it does not sound like the Pharisees have them in mind. The second part of this is them being in possession of a denarius. Now, you may be thinking, so what if they have a coin on them? Reach into your pocket or look in the cushions of your favorite chair or your couch or even your car. 
Many of us have coins, and you will see the face of somebody with a connection to our government on these coins. See, this isn't strange for us, and this is declared legal tender for any transaction that we might make. But to a Jew, it would represent an unclean world because it has a face of the emperor on it. They have their own coin for their worship. But for taxes, they have this coin. Now, anything that is unclean is not fit for worship. If you need a refresher of this and the laws around this, then look back to Leviticus, the fifth chapter. But the main actions for this come from verses 3 and 6. It reads, Or if he touches human uncleanliness, of whatever sort the uncleanliness may be with which one becomes unclean and it is hidden from him. When he comes to know it and realizes his guilt, he shall bring to the Lord as his com compensation for the sin that he has committed a female from the flock, a lamb or a goat for a sin offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him for his sin. And it goes on and on. And you will see other things in case he doesn't have that particular thing. There's another offering that he may bring. But you might find it interesting and take some time to reread Leviticus or just read it for the first time. Now, it may not be fully clear still as to why this coin is as much of an issue as it is. You would have to go back a few chapters in Matthew to remember that this conversation is ongoing and has been for a few chapters already, going back to a few Sundays for us. Jesus was approached as he was entering the temple, and so we can say that this is near the entrance or within one of the deeper areas inside of the temple. So now it should be clear why this coin is an issue that they would be holding on to one. In order to pay taxes, a denarius would be needed, but it does not hold value in the temple. Additionally, looking back on Leviticus and what happens when someone touches the unclean, we can clearly see that whoever had the coin or even touched it, or touched the person who touched it, or touched the next person, you get the picture. They all are all unclean. They are all at the temple, ready for worship, and are unclean. See? Clear enough? I sure hope so. Because this most certainly would be used for submitting a payment of taxes but should not be in contact or come even close to the temple. Especially since they're trying to catch Jesus as being something else, while they themselves are unclean. Now the next part comes into giving to God. So what is it that we are to give to God? Since all that we have comes from God, like a good neighbor, we should return anything and all things to God. They all belong to him and all come from him. We are more like stewards of anything that we have. So it is not right for us to try to keep it. You see, it doesn't belong to us. It never really belonged to us, but always belonged to God. It still belongs to him, and so when we are starting to fret, when we are starting to worry or distress over anything of the world, we can safely remember that everything is in God's hands. You will hear, hear tales, stories, even lies, trying to stir up your fears so that you will abandon your reason and abandon even your faith. Even these things are from God, and as good stewards, you should not give them up to those 
who they do not belong, but only relinquish them when it is God who is asking for them. Until that day comes, keep your faith in God and in the mercy that he has shown you through his only son, Jesus. Our reading helps us to see the actions of the neighbors, proper actions and an attitude towards government, and more, most importantly, what our attitude should be towards God. Even when we have those ne- neighbors we don't necessarily agree with, who aren't necessarily kind to us or who borrow things and do not return them. We can still respond with kindness and love. To those who have not yet known the light of Christ, we can bring that to them. The love that you show them is how they will come to know that you are a Christian and come to know God's love. We see in John 13, verses 34 to 35, when Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. If you are confused on what to give your neighbor, leaders, elected officials, or God, then this last verse should make it very clear to you. Give them all love. If you give of love, then the rest will be easy. So when you go to give, give them heaven. Give them love. Now may the peace peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, it's come to that time for announcements once again. Thank you for joining us here for service. As usual, you can keep your eye on the chapel chatter or the good news email. Great sources for information. But if there's something that you're not aware of or unsure of, would like to know more about, give us a phone call. We would love to hear from you. Just reach out to our line at the office and we'll get you whatever information you need. But we also like to use this other number here for giving. You can text your donations as you see fit. You can bring donations into the office. But tithing is also of time. So if you have extra time, maybe you consider joining one of our groups. The Stephen Ministry and trustees are looking for members. But they're also going to be doing a year-end mailing, which is going to be a highlight for a little while. It's going to be on... November 18th in the morning, we'll bring donuts. So we would love to have you come help out and help us eat those donuts because I don't need any more. But we cannot possibly get through a service like this online, especially without giving thanks to the many volunteers, people who have given their time and effort to put this together. Many of the people you don't ever get to see have put in more hours to make this service possible, and we'd like to say thank you. And with that being said, let us return to our service. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for the church and the church family that we are a part of the community that we are a part of. We thank you that we can come and worship and hear your word and be with other Christians. And at this time, Lord, we know that it's difficult for all of us because we can't worship together. Keep us strong, keep us encouraged, and keep us uh, reading the Bible and, and praying for others in this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, 
Lord, please be with those who are on the, as we call it, front lines, our medical professionals, our military, our police departments, governmental leaders. Please be with those who are helping to guide and support the community um, in this very trying time. Please enable them to be the best that they can be, to feel your love surrounding them, to have faith, um, and just know that you are God and know that you are there for them. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, today we pray for all those who are sick and suffering, for those who are weary or find life burdensome. May they come to you and be refreshed. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, be with uh, all the homes, families, and those that may be living alone, um, for those that may be going through hard times, and we pray that you will give them strength, patience, and faith, that th through all things you mean it for the good. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, give us peace in a time of turmoil. Grant us wisdom during uncertainty and change. Fill us with love that overflows so that no matter the circumstances, we can love our neighbors as you love us. And remind us constantly of the gifts you've blessed us with. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his word, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give to you his peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Give him heaven, folks.